All right, hello everyone. And I will talk about KiloSort. And KiloSort is um, what is known as a spike sorting algorithm. And I'll get it, I'll tell you in a moment what that means. Um, it's something that I have been building and supporting over the past, you know, five, seven to seven years or so. There's been multiple versions of it. Um, now there's finally kind of a Python version, um, but it's not quite complete. And uh, part of the goal of this project is to really shift all of the, um, well, the community and also the tools available to the Python version. And I have on this first slide, a number of people that have, um, you know, at some point when I was, um, where I took the slides from uh, two years ago, you know, there were, uh, several people that I was working with um, kind of, you know, remotely in the summer of 2020, uh, some of them on the data analysis side. I mean, there were multiple interested parties and it looked like everything was going really great in terms of the development team for this project. Um, but then, you know, about six months later or so, uh, most of the um, developers we had working remotely kind of, you know, had other things to do and uh, didn't really continue. And, um we kind of, most of the development just stopped. And so my goal in the near future is hopefully to restart some of that um, and get back to that kind of nice situation we had uh, about two years ago. Now, KiloSort is best understood in relation to um, this hardware that was built at Junilia with collaboration um, from universities around the world. Uh, it's called NeuroPixels. It's a um, silicon probe for recording uh, extracellularly from neurons um, with electrophysiology, voltage signals. And this has had two versions on its own. Uh, Kilosor development has kind of kept pace uh, with the NeuroPixels development and informed it in some cases. For example, some adaptations of this probe are motivated by the analysis side that happens on uh, the data that comes from NeuroPixels probes. Now, these are also, you know, two of the like the most well used um, hardware and software in the community. You know, if you just look at my scholar page, for example, you know, NeuroPixels 1.0 is like, you know, highly cited, so is KiloSort. KiloSort is even like just a bioarchive preprint. It's never even been a paper. Um, and, um, you know, do basically, due to the fact that I was the, the primary developer here, um, didn't really have time to um, really either, you know, make the code very professional looking or even like write papers about it. Um, now, what Hillsor actually does is it takes uh, voltage data from probes like this, where every one of these little channels records um, a, a different uh, piece of voltage uh, from a different point of view, as it were. Um, and then it finds the electrical signatures of each neuron uh, on all of these different sites. Here's four example neurons. Uh, for each one of them, what you're seeing is a little snippet that's essentially less than one millisecond long um, that we detected as belonging to that neuron. And there's multiple different events overlay on top of each other. So you can see that the events from a single neuron are very reproducible um, and they're kind of localized in, in specific electrodes uh, on this probe. And that is essentially the problem of spike sorting is to find such events and cluster them together because uh, the data comes more like this, and here's a view from the GUI. Um, if you look on the right, this is um, kind of a, a view of, of 400 channels of voltage data. Each of the rows is a different channel, and then in positive and negative deflections are uh, in black and red. So this is what the data comes as, because there's all these neurons firing all the time uh, on top of each other. Uh, and so there is a um, kind of a, a demixing problem uh, simultaneous with the clustering problem to uh, identify each of these little wiggles as essentially a different, um, uh, an event from a different neuron. Uh, and that was the, the, the setup GUI. So this is what the users would see when they first load the data into the GUI to set up a KiloSort to run. And then once the run is finished, everything goes to this uh, Phi GUI, which is this really nice GUI um, that one of our collaborators built, Cyril Rosant. 
uh, this is you know all nice and and, and well developed, well maintained, um, and you know it'd be nice if Kilosort reached this level of, of maturity as a as a piece of software as well. Now, some of the other things that are an essential part of the package are things like spike sorting benchmarks. Um, and for example, here's sorry, here's a simulation by Jennifer Cuomo, um from a few years ago now um, that tells us essentially, you know, does Kilosort 2 work better, for example, than Kilosort 1 or than other algorithms? This in this particular case, it did it find more units correctly. Um, and that helps tell us not just that you know the algorithm works, but it can actually form the basis for things like unit tests to um, make sure that as we develop further, we uh, we don't actually we keep progressing, we don't regress on on some of these benchmarks. Now, the biggest problem right with Kilosort is there's literally no one has no one been for more than a year now um, really even. Um, helping the, the community. You can see the number of issues here has really piled up. Um, there is a, you know, people need help with all sorts of issues. Uh, I mean, you know, none of these are, these are all like extremely diverse issues. They can range from the hardware side of things to the, to the actual software, to the output. Uh, there's, there's really a, a wide range of, of problems that need to be addressed. Now, every time that I actually get some time on my own, that I can actually help other people um, kind of perfect their spike sorting pipelines, like this example um, uh, by Rich Gardner from the Moser Labs. Um, there's always like, you know, slight differences in, in the kinds of preparations people have. This is a freely moving rat, for example, with a neuropixels implant. You know, the exact data here doesn't <laughs> necessarily, um, we don't need to get into that, but, um, point is, is is it's the same it's really the same algorithm the same data the same device applied in a slightly different way and then you know someone needs to uh, support um, the, the the scientists to you know tweak the algorithms to to work in that case another thing that's um, again I think due to lack of support we can't really do is we can't integrate some modules that other people built for example Rajat I worked a little bit uh, a few years ago to develop this essentially post hoc classifier that just happens at the end of Kilosort where it tells you whether one of those little wiggles is coming from a neuron or not. Uh, and it's a really good classifier, but it you know never made it into Kilosort because um, you needed to be integrated um, and we don't really have uh, the kind of modular support that would be needed. To conclude, um, you know, I think what we need at this point is really to push out the Python version, shift the community towards the Python version. They're all using the MATLAB version still, uh, which is, you know, mostly done, but needs a lot of checks and tests and um, just a, a lot of confirmation that it works the way we, we think it should work. Uh, we need a lot of uh, user support um, and we need support for uh, new modules just to be able to make um, Kilosort more modular so that uh, we can add some of the other things the community has developed uh, into it. And that's it from me. Thanks so much, Marius.